here we are at crunch time the rtx 2080 review and this gpu is coming in at 800 us dollars and in australia 1200 aud msrp currently you can pick up a 1080 ti cheaper than this and this is going to play a pretty important role in today's review Though what NVIDIA have done with this architecture, namely Turing, is added tensor and ray tracing cores and added new specs to the RTX 2000 series. They've also promised ray tracing and also deep learning super sampling in real world games. And unfortunately, both of these new tech have not made their way into any real world benchmarks or games that I have here in the inventory. And when I saw this, I scratched my head and I checked two of the titles that were promised DLSS that is PUBG and Scum, and I couldn't find the options anywhere. Then I also checked with other benchmarkers like Steve from Hardware Unboxed, and he also confirmed the options are just not there. Though Nvidia did provide two demonstrations where the ray tracing was working, but it wasn't working near the six times up to performance they noted, as well as the fact that I couldn't even benchmark the Star Wars demo properly, I actually just had to take a scene and guesswork with my eyes. Then after that, I had a Final Fantasy 15 demo with DLSS enabled, a 4K benchmark, and this really didn't show any improvement over the 10 series card in tandem to other benchmarks here. Though, let's get on with those other benchmarks and tell you guys all about the RTX 2080 from Gigabyte. Much love from Gigabyte. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and first off here we have Far Cry 5. Now I tested in 1440p ultra wide and also 4K, as this is where these cards are really intended to be pushed in my opinion. 1440p ultra wide, the RTX 2080 scored a little loss, and at 4K it ultimately balanced out with the 1080 Ti. Though keep in mind that both these cards are pre-factory OC models, and we will have to talk about overclocks a little later. We also had the 1070 Ti in the mix because now we have a range of GDDR5, versus 5X, versus GDDR6, which is new VRAM on the RTX 2000 series cards. Though the 2080 does have a 256-bit memory bus versus the 1080 Ti's mind-boggling 352-bit memory bus. Now moving on to PUBG, this is where the RTX 2080 spread its legs a little and scored a victory both at 1440p, 21x9 and also 4K. We did use the same driver which was a yet to be released driver on all three cards as well. So PUBG a victory for the 2080, but things took a sudden turn when we moved over to the mysterious and video card demanding scum, which saw the 1080 Ti score a victory at 1440p ultra wide. And also another thing to note with all these benchmarks too, especially scum, I did keep them as apples to apples as possible using the high preset in this particular benchmark. Move over to 4K, then saw the gap close ever so slightly, but the 1080 Ti was still letting out a roar of confidence at this point. However, that confidence was soon to be short-lived when we switched over to an old but gold title, Crisis 3, and 1440p Ultra Wide saw a victory for the 2080, but not by a whole lot. Though that question still lingered out there of, can it run Crisis at 4K maximum settings? And well, the answer for the RTX 2080, unfortunately, is no. Though this is maximum settings, keep in mind. Maybe the 2080 Ti can do it, and knowing my luck, the review sample that is in the mail will probably get here sometime next year. Though moving on to the latest expansion on World of Warcraft, Battle of Azeroth. Some interesting things coming out here. The first battle scene is very intense, lots of NPCs, lots of effects. So I decided to benchmark here, and with complete maximum settings, 8 times MSAA, saw the CPU still being limited at 1440p ultra wide across all three cards. And DirectX 12 did not change this one bit. Completely useless implementation of the API in this game, though I usually find it's useless in practically every game I've tried with DX12. Though I really wanted to stress these graphics cards, so we stepped it up to a simulated 2880p ultra wide. Never heard of this setting before, but it was great to stress the GPUs, which is a ridiculous amount of pixels we now have at our disposal, near 20 million. We saw the GPUs finally being maxed at 100%. And here we got some interesting results, and that is virtually a tie, or a TI, between the 2080 and the 1080 Ti. And this result with World of Warcraft really pretty much sums up the two cards going against each other in a nutshell. Uh, they're pretty much neck and neck at different resolutions and in different games. Uh, Destiny saw the trend continue, however, with 1440p being virtually the same, but 4K giving an ever so slight edge to the 2080. And the last of the performance benchmarks we had was 3D Mark Fire Strike, the GPU score. The 1080 Ti pulled ahead here both on default and overclocked settings. 
Power consumption was in favor of the 2080, though I think the 2080 Ti will juice more than the 1080 Ti. Just a gut feeling. However, it wasn't as efficient as what we are used to seeing in the past, especially with regards to the 980 Ti versus the 1080. Though that about sums up the results in a nutshell, I'm pretty much calling it a draw. They traded blows and the power consumption is a little better on the RTX 2080. Though again, as I said in the intro, pretty disappointed that I didn't get to see any of these new effects in real world gaming. And I think perhaps the launch should have been delayed as ultimately I can really only test what's in front of me here today and base my recommendations off that. And basically what we have here is a card that costs a little bit more, is a little bit more efficient, has less VRAM, even though it's faster VRAM, GDDR6 versus uh, 5X. We've got eight gigabytes here on this card and 11 gigabytes on the 1080 Ti. And that's about it really, two years in the making. I mean, I really hope we see the ray tracing and also the tensor cores being utilized and really soon as that is I think where the value is going to come out of these cards. But again, I've only seen this in demonstrations and it really hasn't impressed me one bit whatsoever. Though what about the Gigabyte card itself? This is honestly one of their nicest looking cards they have released to date. It's a 2.5 slot cooler. So if you want to get two of them, you will seriously have to consider some extra space on your motherboard and inside your case. This card takes eight plus six pin PCIe connections and has three 82 mil fans that do a phenomenal job of cooling. Looking at the noise versus fan speed levels, however, we can see that 60% is the sweet spot for this card. Also, the overclocks were quite low. I could only get an extra 74 megahertz on the core with afterburner and also about 200 megahertz on the memory itself. Though this does state on the box that it is a pre-OC model, I have nothing to compare it to here, so I guess I'll just take Gigabyte's word for it. There is a backplate that is simple in nature and on the rear of that card, you'll be created by three display ports one HDMI 2.0 and one USB Type-C out. The graphics card itself also supports NVLink, which is a replacement for SLI and a new bridge and connection type, which is located in the same area of the card itself. There is also an RGB controllable Gigabyte logo on the side of the card, and that can be changed via software. And in Australia, Gigabyte offer an impressive four year warranty with their card, so they have really stepped up their game, especially compared to the previous generation of cards, which were quite, let's face it, ugly. And that's about it really when it comes to the RTX 2000 series, at least currently. Stay tuned because I will be having some more benchmarks coming in the next few weeks, especially with the 2080 Ti. So stay tuned for that. But really in a nutshell with the conclusion, I will say that in terms of raw value for money and raw performance increases, we haven't quite got what we got in the past, especially when it came to the 1080 versus the 980 Ti. That was more power efficient and we got a sizable increase in performance over the 980 Ti. But keep in mind the 2080 Ti, I'm sure will perform much faster than the 1080 Ti, but that will also cost a lot more money, at least from the pre-order figures that I've seen so far. But if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below what you think of the new RTX series graphics cards. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.